Alright, where do we even begin with this? So he said at the beginning of this day that he could feel that this was he, that this was his last day at the Blackmore Manor. So everything is going to end today or tonight. And I'm really dreading it. God, I, I gave myself a good three days break between this episode and the last one. And now that I'm sitting down and I hear this music again, I'm instantly freaked out. <laughs> oh, what this game does to me. Alright. There's a couple of easy and obvious leads we can do. I'm not even gonna go bother checking on the mask yet. I just I don't want to I don't want to see that thing ever again. It was incredibly cold inside the house now. Really? That's hardly comforting. Well, hey, maybe that means we can finally light a fire. Uh, matches. Yep. All right. A nice warm glow here. The wood was now burning nicely in the fireplace. Well, that's a nice crackling ambiance we've got. Uh, we should definitely call Jerry and uh, tell him l all about literally everything that happened in the night. He's probably not even going to believe us, to be honest. Who is it? It's me. The ghost hunter. Any contact with the other oh, world? Oh, buddy. Yet? Actually, I'm not sure. Jerry, I'm definitely not alone in this house. What are you talking about? Last night I saw something down below. It was moving. I wasn't dreaming, and I'm not making this up. Are you sure it wasn't a mutant rat? Definitely no rat. I'm calling the police. No, 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 not just No, yet. let him call the police. Michael, for Christ's sake, you could have a burglar inside the house. This is no burglar, Jerry. It's much more interesting than that, and I want to figure this out by myself. Have you taken leave of your senses? Just promise me you won't call anyone. I can do this on my own. Whatever. Just call me if you need any help. I'm driving there today. Oh, is he? Right. Bye. So Jerry is coming out to meet us today. I wonder what's going to make that go wrong. Because the electrician wasn't able to get here. And then the storm came and he wasn't able to get here then. Let's go outside. Just, there's a whole lot coming down, I feel. All right, uh, so it's still it's still morning, and we've got a lot we can do. First thing I want to check is the mailbox. Uh, did we get that letter de or delivered, finally, that um, we sent to have translated? No, it's not here yet. It must come later today. I can only assume so. Okay, we have a key, though. Uh, let's try it on the shed first. Okay, uh, this is the key. Is this the right key? It is. All right, our shed is open. A strong smell of aged oil was infecting the barn-like garage. Yeah, this is something of an A-frame, isn't it? Oh, it's got a sunroof, too. That is a nice garage. Alright, well, let's go ahead and tear into this place and see what we can find. An old bicycle. There was an old and dusty bicycle in the garage. It seemed to have some sort of device attached to it. Wait, really? What's the device? The odd device was attached to the rear wheel. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know very much about how bikes work, so I could just kind of assume that was part of the bike. Maybe it's like a battery charger? Stores energy? Who knows? What else is in here? A small crate was sitting near the bicycle. Guess there's nothing important in that, otherwise we'd just go have a look. We're going to need more oil, too, aren't we? Because, uh, pretty sure that last night Michael said the last drop of oil was consumed when we fled the basement. Oh, look at this! There's an old roadster here. One classy and old automobile. Still, I didn't want to get very close to it, as it gave me the strong feeling that something was about to jump at me from inside. That would probably sell for a lot. I think you should tell Jerry about that. Bring, bring that thing to Pawn Stars. <laughs> Rick will give you a nice, crisp $2 bill for it. Okay, what's over here? Of all the various items laying on the table, only the toolbox on the far left seemed to have a few useful things. All right, well, thanks for the pointer. What do we have in here? Okay, that was 
some... Okay, I think that's a screwdriver, a really thin screwdriver. Some clippers or bolt cutters, something like that. That might be what we need to get into the crypt. In fact, it probably is. I think it's just those two in there. And then was there really nothing else over here? I guess not. All right. What have I not explored in here? Classy old roadster. It's so easy to miss things in this game. The less I can miss, the better. Ooh, big old axe over here. Come on, come on, take it with you. You know you know, you want it. There's no way I'm going down into the furnace without that axe. Because that's another thing. We really ought to go back down and take a look in the furnace. I'm just kind of dreading that. Alright. So the shed is officially unlocked. And we got a screwdriver and some bolt cutters out of there. Now, I don't know for sure... I'm thinking we can probably use the bolt cutters to get into the mausoleum and maybe we'll find another key in there and i think that okay we're gonna have to go through the back door anyways <sighs> let's take a look in the basement you guys know i don't want to do it but i do it for you <laughs> uh damn it damn it damn it damn it Oh, you know, we could probably get into the greenhouse, too, if we, uh, grease up the door. Because I think it said it was stuck, not locked. Alright, so do we have, like, the people under the stairs who live down here, or what? Okay, please tell me he says, like, I need more oil before I can go back in there. The interior of the furnace was as dark as the mouth of a wolf. In any case, I didn't want to spend too much time near it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so, hooray. I don't actually have to go back down there yet. At least not till we find some more oil. Uh, I guess we could just try refilling it with the kerosene lantern container that was upstairs. Uh, I so, so hate opening doors now, ever since that mask jump scare. <laughs> this shit took the breath out of me. Alright. Let's head off to the mausoleum. A lot of different words for mausoleum. There's like crypt, sepulcher, um, another one that I don't remember. Sepulcher. I, I'm so bad at pronouncing sepulcher. I feel like it's a word that no one uses anymore, so it's really difficult to know how to say it. Okay. Stiffen the door handles, making it possible to manipulate with my bare hands. We want to use this thing, don't we? The snippers. Yep. Alright, we're in. So who all is buried here? A cold shiver ran down my spine as I entered the decaying crypt. The foul smell of rotting flesh seemed to have persisted throughout the years. Yeah, that's not very pleasant. Large windows in the dome above allowed some faint light into the crypt. Oh no! There's a staircase going under? What could be under? I couldn't imagine what the purpose of the grating in the floor was. Obviously, nobody down there was in need of fresh air. Okay, that's actually really weird. And the soundtrack is not helping my confidence. Let's have a look at the crypts first. Wait, can we just open these? I seriously considered what I was about to do, but my curiosity got the best of me. Shit, yeah, okay. I kind of expected the coffins to be under much better protection than this. A corpse in advanced stages of decomposition was inside the coffin. It was disgusting. Whoever that was, I could sense a feeling of terror in its dead face. I'm assuming this is... Caroline. The body had been resting for several years until my disturbance. I decided to leave it alone. No, Catherine. Catherine was the name. I, I, I know I got that name wrong a couple episodes ago. This one? Oh no. Uh, fuck. <laughs> no. No. Is James Blackwood still alive? Is that what we're building to? Oh shit, I don't want to go down there. 
No. Damn it. This game has made me so afraid to play even in broad daylight. Okay, we have a lot of different crypts down here. Uh, okay. Uh, at least they all have an amount of space above them, so, like, no one's gonna just pop out. There were several coffins in this room, probably belonging to the most important ancestors of the Blackwood family. What's this? Most of the plaques were too badly eroded to make out what they said. But I can read this one. It says, Alfred B. Blackwood, 1802 to 1871. Why is his coffin missing? Several coffins in the room. Wait, there was just a... Seeing one dead body inside the crypt had been bad enough for me. This coffin was half opened, and I was horrified to glimpse the remains of a dead cat in it. Strange. Really? Dead cat. One of the coffins was considerably smaller than the rest. That must be... The child... That's gotta be an empty coffin, though. We're gonna have to open that sooner or later. Even though it was better in shape than the rest, it was too dark to figure out what the plaque said. Looks like it's a big R, and then something? We don't have any more lamp oil? They had lamp, didn't have any oil in it. Okay. Let's get out of here. Like, now. The place is too damn freaky for me. After leaving the crypt, I stopped to think for a few seconds. I only found one body inside, but there were two plaques. Something was evidently out of place here. Oh shit! What the? <laughs> my cat is sleeping in my desk tray and he just like sprung awake and twitched for some reason. It, it scared the hell out of me. Ugh. Okay, uh, greenhouse. Nothing scary has ever happened in a greenhouse. And that's a fact. Damn, this music is so sinister, though. I feel like the scariest kind of music is the simplest kind. Uh, real quick, let's try calling Barbara. Maybe she'll tell us if she finished the translation or not. In fact, she might just tell us over the phone what it meant instead of mailing it back. As I was about to dial, I remembered that Barbara said she would take Monday off. Really? Okay, then. Um, maybe she will deliver it back to us. Just not yet. Real quick, can we get a time check? 10 a.m. Okay, we started at 9 a.m. It's 10 now. Fire still crackling away here? Good. An impressive fireplace. It's surprisingly clean. Yeah, okay. Glad to see that. Hey, look at this! We kept the, uh, the bands that were used to lock up the mausoleum. I am a little bit worried now that I'm considering maybe those bands were used to keep something in. <laughs> instead of keeping us out. In which case, uh, we may have some troubles by the mausoleum this coming night. Okay, the greenhouse is over here. Uh, door wouldn't budge. Okay, does that mean it's locked or that it needs to be oiled? I thought that meant it was needed to be oiled. This thing right here. I poured some oil on the hinges of the door and hoped that it would reduce the rust. Yep, all better. Alright. A thick mist struck me in the eyes as I entered the barren greenhouse, and the smell of long-dried plants and dirt permeated the air. Well, something is calling out to me. There's a strange twinkle on the ground. What is that? There's some kind of shiny object beneath the grating. Whatever it was, there was no way I could reach it. Uh, maybe we can unscrew the grating with the screwdriver. Wasn't useful. Lasso it with this thing. Wasn't useful. We'll think of something. An imposing but dead tree adorned the center of the greenhouse. Man, I would love to have a greenhouse someday. It seems like such a luxury. My grandmother always wanted one, but just settled for filling her living room with plants. Several pots were scattered here and there. A few had pathetic plants in them. Okay, don't be too mean to the plants. They're trying their best. Nothing over yonder. One of the pots had collapsed, spreading its contents over the concrete floor. 
know about that. There's a second floor, too. Several plots were scattered here and there. A few had pathetic plants in them. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. What's going on here? A huge pot containing a bush had fallen on the drain. Oh, there's a drain here. You know, after playing this game as long as I have, I think I can say with a degree of confidence that I might find point-and-click horror games, especially ones done right, genuinely scarier than, like, 3D roaming around horror games. I don't know. The upper walkway was livelier than below, due to several plants that had somewhat managed to subsist on it. Interesting. Branches of the huge tree made walking in the upper walkway very difficult. Oh yeah, they're uh, a bit invasive. What's over here? An old fumigator. <laughs> it's like shadows of evil. We might need that. The watering can was of no use to me, as I had no plans to try reviving any of those plants. What about the drawer? Some hedge clippers. And what's this? Ooh, it's a letter. It looks like Blackwood's handwriting, James Blackwood. I'll give it a quick read. February 7th. As much as I regret it, I've decided to stop caring for the greenhouse. All my efforts to save the plants have been in vain. I just can't seem to figure out what is wrong with them. It has been a few weeks since they began falling apart to pieces, dying without any apparent cause. Some of them would just crumble at the slightest touch. This is not only frustrating, but very unsettling. Every time I enter the place, I can feel a sense of dread and decay. What I most regret is the condition of that rare plant I bought from South Africa. It's now all sad looking and almost dried up. I will take it upstairs and look after it, hoping it will get more sunlight, assuming that everything that has been happening here has a natural explanation. Death is surrounding this place, and I can't seem to do anything about it, in spite of my concerns. I can't help thinking that all this began when I brought that... I wonder. No, I have to put those thoughts aside. I should stop reading all those sinister books that are getting under my skin. Speaking of sinister books, I just started reading At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft the other day. And it's great so far, and it's uh, one of the books that was on the shelf in Blackwood's library. So uh, how about that? Maybe good old James Blackwood and I were reading the same stuff. Unopened bag of fertilizer was lying on the table. Uh, do you want to knife that open? Do we have any need for fertilizer? No, I could hurt myself. All right, all right. Uh, was there anything else in this drawer? Or just the notes? Just the notes, I suppose. Is this the plant? The plant on top of the table was strangely attractive. Okay, so this must be the one he brought back from South Africa. I don't know what we're supposed to do with it. One bag had ripped, spreading dirt all over the table. Do we have a trowel? We have this little plant lid. Or paint lid. Alright. Uh, what else is up here? There was a shovel in the planter, but it was stuck in the soil. Well, you can pull it out, can't you? A large hose lying on the walkway. Can't be that heavy. Come on, James. <laughs> Not James, Michael. Alright, uh, what did I miss on the first floor? We know that there's the one shiny thing. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to clip this thing up? Yep, I removed a few branches and leaves, clearing that corner of the drain. So, do I do it again? I don't see much of a difference. That part of the drain was already cleared, so I didn't have to keep cutting the plant. I'm trying to look over it. Is it something over here? All right, um, maybe the rope goes down? The hammer? Give me a second, I'm, I'm not quite picking up what the game's laying down. They want me to do something with the drain cover. And I'm assuming the end all be all is to gonna get that shiny thing. Logically, I'm thinking that the only way we can get that shiny thing out 
is if we flood the drains, and then it will probably just pour it out. So, how would we go about doing that? There was a hose upstairs. Whatever it was, there's no way you could reach it, okay. Give me a second to think of this. How about a bucket? Do we have a bucket somewhere? Have we seen a bucket somewhere in this house? Because there's a little pond just over the corner, right? Theoretically, maybe we could just bail out water and pour it down. Which way was the pond? Is it over here? No, it was this way, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, here we go. Small pool of water below the arching tree. And I have nothing I can use to scoop this out. Nah, it doesn't look like it. The tree had a little hole in the base, which allowed the, some water to pass through. I hadn't noticed that before. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to be going in there sooner or later. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Let me just keep on poking around, and I'll cut back in when I find something that makes a difference. Okay, I just did a little referral to my hint system, and it seems that there are some things we missed at the first two locations that we shouldn't even be messing around in the greenhouse just yet. So, let's do a little bit of backtracking to get back on course. First things first, I think we missed something in the shed over here. There's supposed to be... Uh of tools that were on the floor, I think. Or maybe I'm thinking of something that was in the mausoleum we missed. It's not the axe, is it? No, it can't be the axe. Down here. Oh. Is that a crowbar? It is a crowbar. How about that? Alright. A lot of things you can probably pry open. Okay, I'm just looking for my reticle changes. Nothing seems very grabbable over there. Might have just been the crowbar in there, but as for the other thing, it looks like there's a very, very convoluted puzzle that's in the crypt that I didn't do. And honestly, it just seems like a completely bananas puzzle that I don't think I would figure out in a million years. Since it seems like the obvious solution would be find kerosene for the lantern. Because the end of the game of this puzzle is supposed to just be to get enough light to see what's on the plaque. And to do that, there's a really weird sequence of events. So I'm going to see, I got a little hint on how to do it. We're going to see if we can piece it together from there. First thing I apparently missed. Apparently on the ground there is a rock that is important and I need to pick it up. Uh, not sure if I agree with your detective work there, game. Okay. Is it one of these rocks? Maybe the rock was in the Undercroft. So that's the plaque we want to read. It's this one here that is too dark to make out, and it's supposed to be our convoluted important plaque. It says somewhere down here there's a stone I can pick up that is in between some plaques, and I'm not seeing it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Is that it right here? I never, I never saw that screen before. Uh, these two plaques. So... James T. Blackwood and Catherine Blackwood. Is, is this the, the rock? Is that the stone? If there was a stone that was supposed to be picked up and it was described as in between the two plaques, it would... Wait. Finally! Okay, it was a really finicky hitbox. Okay, so that was the stone. I was very certain that was it and it didn't work. So, uh, here's the first piece of ill logic that is supposed to be used in this puzzle. Apparently, to get enough light to see the thing down there, I am supposed to take that tiny rock and throw it way up here. I hurled the stone at the window, but sadly it missed and bounced off the ceiling, flying out of sight. That was a great help. I'm really glad we did that. 
Now am I supposed to try again? Like, where did the rock go? <laughs> okay, okay, so if... You would have thought that that was a bad idea after it failed the first time. The game would tell you that you're actually wrong, and that you should go downstairs and find another rock. So apparently there's one beneath the stairs in that corner. Is that it? That might just be the same rock. I don't know if that was there before. But we have it now, just a very tiny, convoluted, hard-to-find rock. And so we're going to take that rock, and we're going to throw it up top and see if we're any luckier. Again, I hurled the stone at the window with all my strength, and this time my aim was true. The glass collapsed, throwing shards in every direction. Thankfully, none of them hit me. So, great. So, is that going to give us enough light to go down and see? After a very convoluted and weird puzzle. No, not quite. You would think, but it's actually not enough light. Even though it was in better shape than the rest, it was too dark to make up what the plaque said. Yeah, basically, the light is uh, still undesirable. It's it's not bright enough to see what we want to see. <sighs> Several candle holders were attached to the walls. Alas, but there were no candles in the vicinity. So, now this is where we get really, really convoluted. This whole thing, I remind you, could have been bypassed by just simply going out and getting more lamp oil, or finding improvised lamp oil, or even lighting a match! We have matches! Or, you know what? Hang on, can I just... Can I bypass this whole thing by just going up to the plaque and lighting a match? Is it... Because it's just... We just need to read one thing. It's that simple. Nope, nope, he just says, I'm no pyromaniac. He's afraid of burning a piece of metal. So what we're supposed to do next may shock you. <laughs> Apparently, the game wants us to go find a mirror in the house now and bring it out here so that we can reflect the light from the hole we just made in the glass like an ancient Egyptian living room lighting system. <sighs> I'm pretty sure there was a mirror in the bedroom upstairs. The one that we don't sleep in. Catherine's bedroom. Okay, is this the one? It's a mirror, all right. Uh, to be fair, there are several mirrors in here. How about this one? Over here, perhaps? Oh, the little one, yeah. That makes more sense. So, do we want to unscrew this uh, with the screwdriver? Yep. Alright, so now we have a little handheld mirror. Uh, would have literally never figured that out on my own. So we can talk more about that later. <laughs> For the meantime, let's keep on pushing onward. Seeing what we can uncover. And I try to put the mirror here? I would have had to attach the mirror somehow to the candle holder. Uh, use the straps, maybe? No, can, do I combine my inventory first? Okay, yeah, so <laughs> that was quick. Okay, so now we have... That mirror shining right down into the crypt. Now can we read it? Looks like it's in daylight. What does it say? The inscription was too eroded, but I can make out the letter R on the far left. Okay. Um, maybe we should make a tracing of it? What does our diary say? A lot of new things. Didn't find much inside the crypt. A body was missing. James and Catherine were buried together, in spite of the murder. Catherine is dead for sure, but James, the plot is thickening. This place is really sad and the atmosphere is dense. Okay. So now what do I do? If, um, if it's badly eroded, we know that there's an R on it. Should we make a rubbing or what? Okay, yeah, so apparently that's where this whole sequence ends. We just find the letter R on the plaque, and that's it. Um, that's that's the fruition that that crazy convoluted puzzle comes to. So, that was a fun use of my time. Let's get back inside. There's something that I've suspected happening for a little while now, and that is finding a phone number that appeared somewhere in the house and calling it. And from a glimpse of the guide, it looks like that's actually coming up very soon, maybe right now. Uh, since there is the option on the phone, to actually put in a custom phone number from somewhere else. Now, if you remember right, there was a contractor's sheet up here in the safe that just gave information about 
renovations being done to the house. And at the very bottom of it, very faintly written, there was a phone number. So let's see if we can have a look at that. Stupid convoluted crystal ball. Open that up. Okay, it's right down here. Uh, 01912. Oh, God, that's, that's a British phone number. I'm used to just three-digit area code, three-digit extension, and then four-digit finale. This is just two different sets of five numbers, isn't it? Okay, I'm taking a picture of that. And now we'll see if something happens if we go downstairs and give it a call. We should also probably give Jerry a ring, too, because I would like to talk with him every chance I get. I don't know why Michael refused to call the police. That really, really bugs me. Okay. Let's pick this up. I dialed another number. Okay, let's try this out. So, this is going to call the construction company who did the renovations on the Blackmore place? Depends if we're actually going to get through to them. Good day, the National Bank of Northumberland. Oh. Robert Blake speaking. Hello, Robert. I need some help. Hey, look, we have dialogue here. Um, okay, so this is a bank, and we want information about Milton or Blackwood. Let's start off with Blackwood. It's about James Thomas Blackwood. Uh, do you have a customer called that? I'm sorry, sir. I can't give you that kind of information. Um, I said that I was Chief William Bailey. Or I told him that I was Dr. Milton. I don't know who Chief William Bailey is, so he could probably get away with saying that we're Dr. Milton. My name is Christopher Milton, a renowned doctor and good friend of the Blackwood family, and I demand some respect. It, all, all right, sir. Please, just hold on for a few moments. Ah, yes. I have a customer listed as James Blackwood here. Asked about the construction during the 60s or recent activities. I... Let's ask about recent activities, because there shouldn't be anything happening on his account since 1963. Good. I need to know about any recent banking activity in this account. What, uh, what kind of banking activity, sir? Well, you tell me. Any withdrawals, payments? Look, sir, I'm really sorry, but I can only give that information to Mr. Blackwood himself. So that means the account is still active? Well, yes. It's Me. active? I can't give you this information, sir. You said your name was... Um, I won't waste your time anymore. Good day. Oh, what? Wait. We missed out on dialogue there. Okay, so there was actually, like, butterfly effect, you make your own decision, dialogue in that sequence. Let me save the game real quick. I'm gonna see if I could call it again, and maybe try figuring out more information. Okay, this time we'll say we're the, we're the officer. Oh, you again. If you uh -oh. persist, I shall have to inform the authorities. All right, all right, relax. Ah, looks like we're not going to get any more out of them. It's starting to feel like I might have been wrong. Maybe it's not James Blackwood's child that is still alive, but James Blackwood himself. Curious. So, R. The, the baby's name begins with R. Is that what we've concluded? <sighs> August 1961. Okay, yeah. And that is when the newspaper clipping was. So, that adds up. Place of birth. Rothbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No phone numbers on here? Don't think so. There's a shovel here. Oh, no, that's not a shovel. It's just the wagon handle. Do these blocks spell out anything? That's kind of weird. Uh, all the blocks looks like they have a letter and then a number on them. But then this one is just an M. Huh. This one spells out bin. Obin. Obina. And then there's a P under there. And then it's 097, is what it says alternatively. <laughs> Knowing this game, that's probably going to be important. <laughs> okay, uh, but otherwise, there was nothing else in here. Was there? Okay, and I didn't even find any phone numbers on the birth certificate. 
great. That makes me very happy. All right, uh, Michael, how do you feel about doing some writing? That's a good idea, yeah? Yeah, we love writing. Come on, let's go be productive. No, I knew it was fruitless. I couldn't write. I had to solve the mystery. It was the only thing that mattered to me now. All right, all right, fair enough. No writing for you. Jerry. Let's try calling Jerry. That's all I can think of. You know, I still am really curious, though, about what that Italian letter had to say, because as far as I can tell, there's been no allusions to Italy in this whole game. Oh, no, 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 you know what? The maid, the maid was an Italian immigrant. I'll bet that that was her letter, and she probably wrote something really important in it. I can't wait to hear what that is about now. Well, let's try Jerry. Let's see if we have anything new to speak with Jerry about. Yes? Hi, Jerry. Michael, I was worried about you. Are you doing okay? Yes, I'm fine. And I think I know the identity of my intruder. Ooh. Tell me. He's pieced it together. James Blackwood. Yeah! The Blackwood person? Michael, are you serious? That the ghost of the murderer is roaming the house? I'm not talking about his ghost, Jerry. I'm talking about him. What the heck do you mean? His coffin's empty. I mean James Blackwood himself, alive, in this house. What? How is that possible? It makes sense. After murdering his wife and realizing what he has done, he begs for help to Christopher Milton, who fakes his death. Milton? The previous owner? Michael, you're losing your mind. Ooh. Even if he managed to hide himself, how did he survive all this time? Milton has been missing for years. Good point, but I'm sure a desperate man like Blackwood would have found a way. Yes, by turning into a ghost. Wait a minute. Mm, yeah, I have it right here. James Blackwood passed away on June 1963. Would you please stop this? Jerry, just listen to me. I know mm. I'm right. There's only Mrs. Blackwood's body in the crypt. His is missing. Oh, God, Michael. You've really gone out of your mind. Digging into coffins, what next? Desecrating the chapel? Whatever it takes to solve this mystery. You can only find stories like this in books. Precisely why I'm beginning to wonder about your sanity. You'll see. All right. Um, big takeaway from that is that we got another date dropped. June 1963. That's when James Blackwood died, apparently. And our theory now is that his doctor buddy, Christopher Milton, came and faked his death. And that Blackwood's still alive and Milton's in cahoots with him. So we're going to get more intel now if we go to the attic and uh, take a look at our stack of newspapers. Is that what we're hinting at? Yes, it is, Mr. F. We're going to go catch a murderer. We're going to go catch a murderer ghost. Yep. Uh, I went through the news during June of 1963. The article wasn't as informative as I hoped, but there was a phone number scribbled on the page. Oh, so there is. Bailey. Would that be the police chief? Okay, okay, let's read this real quick, just to catch up to speed. The Journal, 1st of June, 1963. Following the shocking news that became of public knowledge last week, we must now inform about the sinister outcome of the story that has been in the mind of every citizen of our town these past few days. Mr. James Blackwood has died at the age of 56 due to a heart attack, allegedly because of the pressure and stress by the astonishing accusation by Mrs. Eva Mariani, former maid of the family. This puts a sudden end to the case deferred by the authorities. Police Chief William Bailey said... Oh, he, okay, so he's the police chief. It saddens me that Mr. Blackwood was never brought to a proper trial. No matter what kind of excuses could be made, the death of Mrs. Catherine Blackwood is a fact. I am fully convinced that he was guilty. I don't know if that's very ethical for a law enforcement official to just completely vindict somebody. Dr. Christopher Milton is said to be taking care of the funeral that nobody will attend. And all the belongings of the Blackwood family are now in his possession. All right, that's 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 a little S-U-S right there. We've got some suspicious activity going on. Silently, Rothbury returns to daily life, turning the page over one of its darkest chapters. Many will wonder in the years to come what really happened inside Blackwood Manor. And then mail train robbery well over 1 million euros. I doubt that's important, but we have the phone number, of course. So I'm going to take a call or take a picture of that. And it sounds like we are going to be calling Police Chief William Bailey 
at 01665-65217. Alright. Just a casual tangent phone number. Oh, Jerry, I love you. Whenever I'm stuck in this game, I just give you a call and you usually bail me out. I wonder what else we could have learned, though, if we uh, took that conversation with the, bla the bank fella in a different direction. Posing as Christopher Milton. We could have posed as Bailey instead. Maybe like, oh no, I know Bailey. You're not Bailey. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Bailey has to say. Who is this? Hi, are you Mr. William Bailey? That's me. And you are? Yes, my name is Michael Arthade. I'm a journalist for a local newspaper in Rothbury. I see. And what's this all about? Well, you're the former police chief of this town, aren't you? Indeed. I served many years ago. And you were once in charge of a famous, or should I say, infamous case here? Oh, bloody hell. Don't tell me this is about James Blackwood. Well, yes. I'm writing a story for my newspaper. Um, the most famous police cases of Northumberland. Have you got any idea how many times I've talked about this? <laughs> Library. I'm sure you'll find plenty of information about Blackwood there. Please, Mr. Bailey, I beg you. It won't be the same if I can have the information from someone who was there, and no less than the renowned William Bailey of Roth. Flattery. Oh, all right, son, spare me the nonsense. What is it you want to know? Well, in the first place, what did Ava Mariani see exactly? Blackwood was automatically deemed guilty. He was found digging his wife's son. Why did James Blackwood never appear before a jury? When you're someone as renowned and famed as James Blackwood was, you can pretty much avoid the authorities. However, you can't avoid justice. And justice was brought upon James Blackwood. <laughs> justice? How? He died shortly after the accusation. What happened to Dr. Christopher Milton? How should I know? You bet your life that slimy worm was up to something. Ooh. I couldn't prove it, though I spent years investigating him. A shame we couldn't implicate him as much as James Blackwood. Are you saying he could have had something to do with the murder? Blackwood and Milton were very intimate. Milton did the impossible to aid his friend, and even clear his name after he died. And was ever determined the cause of death of Catherine Blackwood? Yes, partly. Mrs. Mariani managed to see her throat was cut oh, open. Shit. Ripped, she would say. Ripped. It no. It have been horrible for the poor girl. Still, everything sounds so vague, as if something were missing. Are you questioning my performance on this case, son? <laughs> no, 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 sir, not at all. I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, why a proper autopsy was never done? An autopsy day. Please, sir, this is very important to me, and I could really use your help. I'm trying to fit all the pieces of this mystery together. Mystery? <laughs> what mystery? We're losing him. You must be one of those people that just loves splitting hairs, don't you? I don't think I understand, sir. Listen, son, that goo blooded bastard murdered his wife, God knows why, but he and his fancy doctor did the impossible to hamper our investigations. You don't have to be a brilliant detective to realize Blackwood did it. There's always a reason behind a murder. Nobody has ever found out why Blackwood did what he did. Psychopaths don't need any reasons, and James Blackwood turned into one, precisely. There's got to be something else. I can't believe Blackwood flipped just like that one sunny day. It doesn't make any sense. People flip, son. You could be flipping right now without knowing it. <laughs> <sighs> well, 
Well then, tell me how Blackwood reacted when you pulled his wife from beneath the ground. I beg your pardon? I mean Catherine Blackwood's body when you dug in the garden of the manor. Like I said, they hampered the investigation. We never managed oh, what to the set hell? one foot inside the manor. What kind of bloody journalist are you, son? <laughs> but are you telling me you never actually retrieved the body? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Now, if you don't mind... What the but, fuck? but wait, th this doesn't make any sense. Stop wasting my time, dammit. I was enjoying my retirement until you had the brilliant idea of calling me. I don't want to hear anything else about this case ever again. Please, Mr. Bailey, don't... Leave me alone. Dude. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, so... If the police never actually came up here, and it was all just Mrs. Eva Mariani's testimony, then that means either Miss Catherine is still underground in that part of the garden, or that somebody else buried in her coffin. Oh boy, there comes here come the chills again. That shit's freaky. Okay, uh, this is the rough part of, gra of ground right here, right? The soil in this area of the garden was devoid of life. We're gonna dig her up now, aren't we? Yeah, there was a shovel in the greenhouse. We gotta know what's down there. Oh, god damn it, god damn it, god damn it. <laughs> oh, I don't wanna know, but we have to. Okay, if he's letting me take the shovel now, then that's totally what we're doing. It was just up here in a soil bed, wasn't it? Yeah, right here. Shovel, it was stuck in the soil. Okay, just loosen up the soil. Crowbar it? I don't know. Wasn't useful. Use the the wet the watering can? Hmm. I don't know, man. Shit's freaky. I like We have to be digging up that plot of ground there. There's nothing else I can think of. It's just the natural flow of the investigation at this point. 